Way back in 1994, Nintendo filed for a patent in the United States of America for something truly remarkable and awesome. It was patent US 611-5036A for, quote, video game slash video graphics programming program editing apparatus with program halt and data transfer features. Now, to put it in clear terms, the Nintendo Game Processor was a custom-built computer complete with a keyboard and a mouse and a totally awesome-looking case that was built with one specific purpose, to visually create your own Super Nintendo games via drag-and-drop and write those games onto an actual Super Nintendo game cartridge. Here's a glimpse at what the game processor would have looked like. Note that the four Super Nintendo or Super Famicom style game connectors on the front, one for keyboard, one for mouse, and two for SNES controllers. And note the cartridge slot on the very top of the unit. In this slot is where you would place a battery-backed SRAM cartridge. And when you created your game, it could be exported to the SRAM car on that cartridge. The battery would keep the contents in RAM, thus allowing your game to be playable on anyone's totally regular, unmodified Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The RAM-based cartridges were known as Game Processor RAM Cassettes. There's not a lot of these floating around, but some were clearly produced. They even pop up on eBay from time to time, so we know what they look like. Unfortunately, because the data was stored entirely on battery-backed RAM, the odds of finding a cartridge with a fully intact game are close to zero. <laughs> Here's what one of these RAM cartridges looked like inside the case. So, so what did the software look like that allowed you to create these Super Nintendo games? Well, unfortunately, we don't actually know a whole lot about that either. But we do know at least one of the possibilities, the one outlined in the patent itself, was called Mario Factory. Much like how Super Mario Maker nowadays works, Mario Factory would allow you to lay out a map to design game levels. The, the patent uses a variation on the original Mario Brothers game, uh, such as in this illustration. But it clearly was intended to go much further than creating just levels in a Mario game. Most aspects of the game appear to have been fully, visually programmable. Changing sprite directions, playing sounds, etc. could all be tied to actions. Sprites could be designed entirely within Mario Factory and animations created based on them. You could even create in-game music using a traditional sheet music interface. Very, very strong Mario paint overtones here. <laughs> I, I love it. Again, every aspect of the sprite control appears to be configurable. Here, using visual representations of the SNES controllers, while pressing D-pad right, move right. Lots of possible conditions to customize the controls, only when pushed, while pressing, etc. So, how does all of this work exactly? Well, from the patent, quote, the main CPU and game CPU cooperate in the game execution and editorial process such that an editing screen generated by the main CPU is superimposed on the game screen generated by the program executing the CPU. The game processing console includes ports connected to a wide variety of peripheral devices, including a standard television set, keyboard, game hand controllers, mouse modem board, an interface board for coupling modem board, cool right? An interface board for coupling the game processor to a personal computer system, floppy disk drive, an external RAM game cartridge and a user's ID card. Now, a, a fairly fascinating way to approach it. As I understand it, the Nintendo game processor really is two machines in one. A Super Nintendo the game CPU, and a more, more PC-styled side, 
the main CPU. The game itself runs on the Super Nintendo portion and the main CPU overlays all of the editing tools on top of it. So you aren't running a Super Nintendo emulator or a simulator. There's no interpreted runtime environment. You're creating a real Super Nintendo game and running it on real Super Nintendo hardware as you are developing it. A super cool way of doing this sort of thing. Nintendo clearly intended this to, at least in part, be targeted at schools. A quote from the patent. In accordance with the present invention, <laughs> unique video games may be simply created by users ranging from a relatively unsophisticated elementary school student to sophisticated game developers. A unique hardware and software platform enables users to create original games by selecting icons which access more detailed editor screens, permitting the user to directly change a wide variety of game display characteristics concerning moving objects and game backgrounds. <laughs> you really got to you really got to help those quote unsophisticated elementary school students out, eh? Anyway, uh, this this system seemed to have partially existed at least to some degree. RAM cartridges have been found, and some ROM and RAM dumps have been recovered that appear to have been made with the system for Nintendo's long-dead Saddle-A-View service, which allowed people to download regular games from Nintendo, including games made with this system. Uh, that said, I have yet to see any actual picture of a complete Nintendo game processor, processor system, nor have I found any screenshot or any files pertaining to the Mario Factory software itself. But one can't help but imagine just how cool this would have been all the way back in 1994. <laughs> this is so cool. This is so cool. This is this is an article that uh, I wrote some time back, and it's it's uh, posted up over at the Lunduke Journal of Technology, uh, lunduke.locals.com. This is the sort of thing you get over there. <laughs> if you're if you're watching this and listening to this on YouTube or Rumble or anywhere else, you are missing out by not subscribing over at lunduke.locals.com. So go grab a free subscription. Just grab the free subscription. I get it. You're cheap. I don't blame you. I'm really, really cheap too. Grab the free subscription at lunduke.locals.com. If you've got a couple of bucks to spare, get get a paid subscription so you can get all the the podcast episodes and the the uh, the the exclusive articles and all that sort of thing. But at the very least. Free subscription to lunduke.locals.com will at least get you to see the majority of articles that I post. Most of them. Not all, but most. And most is pretty darn good. Most of the articles from the Lunduke Journal are, are still better than all of the articles from all of the other tech publications. You know it's true. <laughs> Anyway, uh, go forth, have amazing dreams about the Nintendo game processor. I want one. Um, I, I've never seen one. I, I've never seen a picture of a real one. The patent is as close as we get, but we do know that it somewhat existed, at least in a prototype form, and that at least one game has was released on the Satellaview service. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Saddle of You? Satell of You? I don't remember. You could download Super Nintendo games. That existed. That was real. And thank thank God it was real because it allowed stuff to be downloaded and, and not stored on those, those RAM carts, right? That's the only reason we even have one simple partial ROM dump from a game. And that's, that's, that's all we got. That's all we got. Anyway, go to lunduke.locals.com, grab your free subscription so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff like this, and go forth and be nerdy. <laughs> and with that, I do declare, end video.